Hey guys, we're going to be working on the edit and delete button. That way we can delete products or edit them if we need to change something about them. Now for this, what I really want to do is just copy the mutation that's already in the Prisma database. So here I ran the server with npm run dev so I can now look at the schema for the database. And we see there is an update one right here. And we can see we pretty much just want to do exactly this. But the thing is we can't copy it like we did um, the other mutation. So over here, um, this guy right here, not that one, the query that we made where we actually were able to just copy it identical. We can't for this, for a similar reason why we can copy it for create product is we have a picture, right? And this has to be an upload type. So we're gonna have to do it a little bit differently, um, but that's okay. So we're gonna do that and then we're gonna be copying delete product exactly the same uh, there's no really need to change it unless uh, you wanted to also delete the image, which in that case you'd want to. Uh, all right, so let's get into this. So first off, let's go ahead and change this, or not change, but add to this a uh, update product. And we're gonna have an ID, which is of the type ID. So this is how we're going to query the product um, with the ID. And then here, we're gonna have an optional string, optional price, and that's gonna be a float and a picture. So all these fields are optional because you may only want to update a certain one of them, right? And I think we wanna return a product from it. Let's make sure, yep, we return a product and uh, it's not always there, so let's not add the bang sign to the end. Okay. So I might just pass a name, I might just pass a price, I might just pass a picture um, into this. All right, so update product is good. Let's go ahead and add the uh, mutation for this. So we're gonna hey async update product, and this is going to take parent, and then we can copy, let's actually just copy what we have here and say update product. Okay, and we can put our content in the middle. So what do we want to do? Uh, first, we do want to get the uh, user ID. So let's grab that. Uh, oops. And the reason we really want the user ID is to make sure that uh, the user of that's currently trying to edit this is actually the person who owns the product. So what we need to do is say const product. We need to get the product. So I'm going to say ID. And we're gonna wait and we're gonna say context.db.query.product. And here we're just gonna pass in uh, where args and where, and we're just gonna pass in the ID. Okay, so what does this do? This will go ahead and get us, and let's just add some spaces. So this looks nice. Uh, this will get us our product. And the thing, the reason why we wanna grab this product is. And do we need to pass in? Yep, we need to pass in info as well. Um, I, I don't think we want to pass info in this case. Yep, looks like info is optional. Um, info, I think you pass in if you want specific fields. In this case, we want all the fields. And I'm going to console log this because um, I'm not sure if it gets us the seller by default. But I want it to, and I want to check right here. Um, so I'm going to say user ID is equal to it's not equal to, we have a problem, right? And that's the thing we need to check for. So not equal to product.seller.id. Um, and maybe we actually look, look this up differently, but we'll see. And we're gonna throw new error. Um, and then we can just say not authorized. So if I'm trying to uh, copy someone's product, but I'm not the seller, or not copy but edit a product, but I'm not the seller, then we're gonna throw an error. Otherwise, what we can do is we can first check if we have a picture. So I'm gonna say if picture, and we're gonna say let picture URL equal to null. And if we have a picture, we know we want to process the upload. So we can put that there. 
and then underneath we're just gonna call the function like this so I can copy you but now for us we're gonna be calling update product and now it doesn't like it because we have data in here we're gonna be passing the name the price picture URL we don't have to pass the seller for this um, but we do need to pass another argument and that is where and here we can just specify the ID of the product and I think this is good so this is how we're going to update our product so first we check and make sure that the user is actually the user who uh, sold the product before they can change it and then we upload the picture so save it to our images folder here if we get a new picture if not we ignore it and then we pass all the data to our update product and that's what we return so nice um, and let's add the same thing to uh, delete product so delete product let's fill that out and this one uh, we can actually just directly copy from what they have over here so direct or delete product is this in the middle so let's copy you and then it returns a product and so product where unique input let's go ahead and just um, doesn't look like we have it yet so copy that and import it from up here cool so this we can actually just forward kind of how we did for our queries over here so we can copy this forward to and do the same thing because there's not really a difference for our this guy for forwarding the delete All right, so delete product, and we're just gonna say forward to DB. All right, I think that's good. We'll see if we get any errors. Um, this is the thing I think we might get errors on. Uh, now we can, on the client side, actually call these mutations. Um, let's see, no errors, so we're good to go. All right, so on the front end, let's head over here to products. So why don't we do delete first because that one will be pretty easy. So we're just going to call the delete mutation. So let's type it up over here. So what we need to pass in there is the where clause, um, which actually we don't need to come over there. We just need to look at it here. Here's the product where clause, which we need to pass in an ID. So here, as a parameter, what it's going to take is uh, this thing. Or we could just say you pass in an ID here. Let's just let's actually take as a variable the ID. So dollar sign ID is equal to the type ID. And here's where we're gonna call this uh, function delete product. And we're gonna pass in a where. And inside the where we'll pass in our ID which is gonna be equal to dollar sign ID. And let's make this pretty. And we need to get some subfields from our product. The one I really care about is just the ID, I suppose. I don't really care to see much. All right, and I think we're good. So I'm gonna add this to the bottom over here of our products page. And I'm gonna say export cons uh, delete product. Uh, and this is a mutation. And we're gonna say const dql, paste this in. And then we need to, again, we're gonna add a mutation here. And with two of them, you've seen this before, I like to import compose. It makes it just a little bit easier to read. So compose. And then here we're gonna say GraphQL and then just pass this in. Delete product mutation. And then we can just call it up here. So call it when this gets pressed and I'm gonna create a function up here. So delete product. And actually I was gonna make a function up there so we don't have to keep making a function in here, but we're gonna to have to because we need to know the ID of the product. So I'm gonna say this.props.mutate, pass in as a parameter 
um, the ID. So variables. And inside of this variables array, we're going to pass the ID, which is just going to be item.id. All right, so give that a save and let's run this. Now, when I click delete right here, I don't think it should disappear right away um, because we haven't updated the cache here. So we're going to have to refresh to see the change. And then if we want to see it live, we're going to have to use the uh, update query function. So let's hit delete. And let's look at our logs here and see if everything went good. So no errors here. And I was console logging the product up. Oh, that's only an update, so we don't even have to worry about that. So all right, this looks like it ran successfully. So if I refresh, we should now not see it. And perfect, we don't. So it looks like our delete works. But we want to see delete, delete right away, right? So similar to how we did with our new product, we need to add um, an update function like this. So I'm going to copy how we did it here. It's going to be very similar. So the query that we're updating is this products query and uh, we're going to have to move it up here so we can access it. I'm going to put it underneath the styles. Okay. So here, um, products query, we read it from the cache again. I'm going to get rid of the comments. I don't really need them. So instead of adding on create product, um, and we don't actually need the data because we already know what's happening. We're going to say data.products.filter. And we're going to say x, x.id is not equal to item.id. And that's it. So what we're doing here oops, is we're reading the products, which are these items from the uh, cache. That's what requery does. And then we're removing the item we just deleted, right? So that's what item.id does, or what this filter command does, is it looks through all the IDs and it keeps the one that are not equal to the one we're deleting, which is item ID, right? Because that's the one we're passing in here. And then we write it back to the cache. So let's save that and watch it in action. So now I'm gonna delete my last item that I own and uh, did not work, so let's see what happened there. Um, nothing seems to have changed so either this did not this just did not work for some reason uh, let's add some console log statements to help us debug now this is going to be annoying to debug because I just deleted all my items so hopefully you can figure out this quickly so I'm gonna say console.log oh I'll tell you right now what we did um, I filtered this but uh, I didn't return it I didn't do anything with the new list, so I need to say data.products here. There we go. So I wasn't assigned, so filter does not change it in place like how push does. Filter creates a new array. So before we were creating a new array and not doing anything with it, now I'm creating a new array, reassigning it, and then, all right, so let's create a product. Um, just another one. And then when I delete it, we should see it go away automatically. All right, add the product. All right, I'm gonna open up my console, see if we see any errors with it. Uh, interesting, I don't see it here. And also I don't see, or maybe I just don't see the edit and delete. Yeah, notice how the edit and delete didn't show up until I refreshed. That's kind of interesting. And I assume the reason for that is um, we're asking for the seller ID and the seller ID must be null or something. So to test this theory, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to console log. Actually, let's do it in render items. Now we can do it at the top. I'm going to console.log products and we can see if it is indeed uh, null. Uh, for now though, what we can do is test our delete. So cool. So when I press the delete button, it went away automatically. So that means our update function here worked. And if I refresh, um, it is gone. So cool. So this worked. The next thing I want to fix real quick, or at least investigate, is whether the seller ID is null. So we're going to add this shoes add product. So now we can see this. So I called this thing ASDF. And so we can see the name here. And I do indeed see the seller ID is equal to this number 
this ID. So that looks like it's not null, that looks good. So we should see it updated here. So I'm gonna refresh and it looks like the same number. We see edit and delete show up here. Um, not sure what causes the delay. So what I wanna do is it's the last item, right? So I'm just gonna say products.length minus one so we can look at that. Say seller.id and then I'm gonna console.log um, this.state.userid. So we can see what the values of both of these are. They should be the same in all instances. In this instance they are because we do see it, but something is not, I don't know if we're having a problem with the update or what. And hit choose, add product. All right, so something is null. So I didn't do this well, so I should have said, it's hard to tell which is which, but I assume this one, I'm assuming the null one is the, uh, the state here, or the user ID is. So I'm gonna say in front, put the state. But I have no idea why the state would be null there. Um, I assume it just needs to load in, which it does, and grab it from async storage, and then it should update, and then they match. So I don't know. Let's also maybe print it here when it's doing the query and the render items. I, it's not re-rendering for some reason. I don't know what the problem with this is. Um, I think we'll just break the video here. I'll investigate this further and see if I can figure out um, why it goes null. And then we'll also get the edit button working in the next video. So thank you guys for watching and I'll see you next time.